our second presentation is uh, about probabilistic multi-objective uh, microbit planning methodology for optimizing the ancillary services provision by Sergio Contreras. Sergio is a PhD student and researcher at the University of Bremen in Germany and at the National University of Columbia. He is uh, currently working on the planning of microbits and also on local active distribution networks. So, Sergio, please. Thank you, Professor Cornelius. Um, so, um, can you confirm me, please, if the screen is... It's okay. It's okay, right? Okay. So, let's get started. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sergio Contreras. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for your presence here in this online session today. Um, today, I want to present you a methodology for planning of microbits that is proposed in the paper with the title Probabilistic Multi-Objective Microbit Planning Methodology for Optimizing the Ancillary Services Provision. The presentation of today is divided in four parts, and let's get started with the introduction and motivation for this research. The microbit concept can cover different types of microbits, but today we will focus on the so-called network microbits, which are the result of interconnected microbits in order to exchange power in grid-connected mode or operate in islanded mode within the network microbit, which has clearly defined electrical boundaries. Now, several benefits has been associated with the microbits concept, but likely the ancillary services provision has taken an special attention due to their impact on the microbits value streams, for example. So then the question is, how microbits planning issues such as uncertainty, multiple contradictory planning objective, different operation modes, and the ancillary services capability by itself can be effectively considered in a planning methodology? Therefore, in formal research, a methodology called Probabilistic Multi-Objective Microbit Planning Methodology, or simply POM, was proposed. And in this paper, particularly, a second version that is called POM2 is proposed to holistically plan network microbits, as we will see in the next parts of the presentation. So now, before we start analyzing the new methodology, POM2, in this section, I would like to mention that the planning strategy in the former methodology, POM, focus on the decision making for the size and location of distributed energy resources in the microgrid. And for that purpose, a true multi-objective approach and a probabilistic approach uh, for the uncertainty models were used. So these two characteristics are maintained in the new methodology POM2, while the main contribution of the methodology POM2 is to propose a strategy to holistically consider the size and location of distributed energy resources and the microgrid topology as part of the methodology. Um, and in this case, a multi-level grass partitioning technique is used for, for, uh, for the formation of clusters and for the definition in a medium voltage network microgrid. So now, the new methodology POM2 here is presented in a block diagram and it's split it into parts to be explained today. And specifically, I would like to highlight that the topology is proposed in a bi-level uh, optimization strategy where an iterative heuristic optimization stage is measured in the upper level and a graph partition stage is uh, executed in the lower level, as we can see here. The methodology starts here uh, in the right side of the block diagrams where a network-based case is defined together as planning parameters and historical data, which are necessary to determine a probabilistic density functions of the uncertainty variables for the probabilistic modeling. And afterwards, in the upper level optimization, the chosen heuristic optimization algorithm that we uh, have modeled based on a population-based metaheuristics creates an initial decision variable vector as part of the planning problem. So before we go on, let's see how the optimization problem definition looks like for the methodology. For the POM2 methodology, the decisions variable vector is defined as a vector set for the capacity of distributed energy resources, a vector set for the location of distributed energy resources, and a binary vector set for the selection of lines in the microgrid. For the objective functions are the maximization of digital power for the answer vision, the minimization of the microgrid average power losses, and the minimization of the microgrid's cost functions, which um, minimizes the investment operation 
and maintenance costs and maximizes the revenue streams for electricity export and ancillary services provision. Uh, additionally, six different groups of constraint functions are defined where, for example, the energy balance, ancillary services provision, uh, conditions, and the topology are constrained in uh, the optimization problem. Okay, Becoming back, uh, coming back to the methodology and still in the upper level of the optimization, the low demand distributed energy resources capacity and the topology are modified for each particle of the current generation in terms of the decisions variable spectrum and probabilistic model. Uh, here, the network is modeled as a graph in the step six, where the vertices represent the buses and the edges represent the lines. And initially, the graph is used to evaluate a complete connectivity of the network in the step six. Therefore, uh, when the topology configuration from the decision variables vector gives rise to a disconnect graph, the objective functions in the upper level are penalized in the step seven and calculated in terms of the graph con connectivity. Contrary, if the topology configuration leads to a full connected graph, the topology uh, um, the methodology guides the process to the cluster formation in the lower level optimization in the step eight. Uh, in the lower level, the multi-level graph partitioning ha uh, has uh, use, and this has three stages that are called the coarsening, partitioning and uncoarsening and refining stages. So let's have a quick look at it. The coarsening stage has the goal of reducing iteratively the size of the original graph by collapsing the vertices, as we can see here with the blue and green uh, symbols. So the coarsening stage gives rise to a reduced graph where the partitioning takes place by itself. So in the partitioning stage, the reduced graph is partitioned in different subclusters uh, which represent the clusters in the network microgrid. And here, the coarsened graph is a partition using the heuristic called greedy graph growing partition technique, that is with these numbers here. Afterwards, an uncoarsening and refinement stage is executed, and in this, the partition graph is onto the initial graph for the same number of iterations, basically. However, in each the partition, Fine, based on evaluating improvements of the partition through swapping a vertice between clusters. As for example, we can see here with this bus uh, with the storage resources that is swapped between clusters. Okay, this process is repeated here in the right side iteratively to find or not a set of feasible clusters. So thus, uh, if there are no feasible clusters, the objective functions are once more penalized in the upper level in the step seven. But if there are found feasible clusters, a deterministic power flow is run for each time step along the planning horizon to calculate the objectives and constraints functions that we saw before. In this case, a planning horizon is defined for one year and three typical days that we call the weekday, weekend, and peak day, which are modeled for 24 time steps of one hour per each day and three days per each month along the planning horizon are used. And additionally, per each time step, the charging or the charging cycle of the battery systems are also defined based on the states of charge of the battery. But additionally, a set of binary decision variables that change the conditions based on the market clearing prices signals for energy trading or, for example, the ancillary services provision are used for defining this uh, operation mode. Uh, these binary variables are included in the mathematical models and constraints for the optimization problem for determining, determining the ancillary services provision in terms of minimum by bit duration, for example, and for step, three possible operation conditions are simulated and evaluated. A grid connected operation where the slack bus is located in the strongest feeder uh, of the base network. General is landing operation where the whole network microgrid is disconnected and individual is landed operation of each cluster in the microgrid. For every island condition, the power balance mismatch is created to consider this uh, grid connector or island operation mode. So now, uh, once simulation data per each time step along the planning horizon has been found, the objective functions and constraints um, are, can be calculated here in the step 10 in the right side of the black diagram. And then 
The steps four to 10 are repeated for each particle in the current generation, and the final objective functions and constraint values are analyzed by the optimization algorithm level in the upper level um, of the methodology here in the step uh, 11. To define uh, at the end the best solution so far and create a new decision variable vector in the step 12 in order to iteratively explore and explode the search space and find a final Pareto optimal set with the, the possible, uh, so, uh, possible solutions to the micro planning problem. The final step of the methodology is the criteria decision, multi criteria decision making step, where uh, an analytic hierarchic process technique is proposed in, part in this paper in the methodology uh, to systematically select a single solution from the Pareto optimal set. So now, know the new methodology called POM2. Let's see some results from the plan, uh, for the planning of a network microgrid. For that purpose, the new methodology is used for the loop-based topology planning of a network microgrid in a, the medium voltage IEEE 37 bus test feeder. Um, four different technologies are used. There are micro turbines, wind turbines, photovoltaic systems, and battery systems. Two case studies uh, are defined. The case study number one, the planning of the network microgrid with two dispatchable distributed generation. Case study two, planning with four dispatchable distribution generation. And in both cases, the results are compared with outcomes of a loop-based and a radio-based planning with the former methodology, POM, where remember, the topology of the methodology is not planned, it's predefined in the process. The optimization problem is solved with the well-known NSGA2 algorithm for 500 particles and 100, uh, 100 generations. And a final solution is chosen based on the analytic hierarchical process. For the first case study, the line one highlights the Pareto solutions for the former methodology uh, for a radio-based topology, while the line two describes the Pareto from for the loop-based planning with the new methodology POM2. First, it can be seen that the new methodology can get optimal results in the same uh, searching area than in the planning results with the former one. And second, the topology planning with a loop-based condition uh, gives rise to solutions with a reduction in power losses, as we can see here. Now, Two solutions, one for the new and one for the old methodology are chosen for the microgrid planning analysis, as we can see here. And the solutions for the new methodology, POM2, uh, is shown in the left side, and the planning solution with the former methodology for a radial-based topology is shown here in the, right, uh, in the right side. First, it can be seen that the network microgrid at the left side has two clusters microgrid and loop-based topology, as there is a dispatchable generation for each cluster, you can see here. Additionally, the results show that the new methodology places the distributed energy resources with a wider distribution than the former methodology, highlighting, for example, the location of the two micro turbines and the wind turbines in the figures we can see here. Furthermore, it can be seen that the initial generation matrix number is optimally adjusted with a lower amount of wind turbines and units in the solutions at the end of the optimization. For the second case study with four dispatchable units, the line one highlights the solution for the planning of the radial-based topology with the former methodology once more, and the line two highlights the solutions of the loop-based topology planning with the new methodology POM2. This shows the capacity of the new methodology POM2 to achieve an optimal set of Pareto solutions under the holistic perspective, even for a higher number of decision variables and clusters. Uh, and in this case, the separation in the power losses and cost of the line two and the line one is wider than in the case one, which can be understood as a consequence of the higher penetration of distributed energy resources, for example. Furthermore, the residual power um, capacity to provide ancillary services or participate in open markets can be almost twice uh, higher than the case one which two extra micro turbines, which confirm the relevance of a posterior analysis based on a multi-objective methodology. Same than in the case one, uh, two solutions are chosen for the analysis. And here in the left side, we have four clusters for the planning of the network microgrid with the, uh, the new methodology and a radial based planning in the right side as from a methodology. 
The results show that the distributed energy resources placement is achieved with higher coverage uh, with the new methodology, and it can be visualized that there is a trend to group the generation uh, close to the feeder when the planning of the distributed energy resources is done without considering topology together. Hence, it can be claimed- Sergio, uh, yeah. can, we, can you maybe slightly, uh, slowly move to the conclusion, please? Yeah, this is the last slide before- Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hence, it can be claimed uh, yeah, that the role of dispatchable units and topology will influence the planning in this way. So to sum up and conclude, this paper uh, proposes a second version of the probabilistic uh, multi-objective microgrid planning methodology, PUM2. The methodology is formulated as a true multi-objective optimization problem with a holistic perspective. The results show that the strategy offers an advantage regarding the traditional separate approaches as with the former and uh, numerical results show that the available residual power can be uh, increased by almost twice with the increase of the generation portfolio. And for future research, the evaluation of a specific reliability and power quality objectives functions and expansion of the planning methodology with more comprehensive operation will be addressed. So thank you for your attention and I will be happy to attend to your questions. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, so we have uh, first uh, one first question. Please don't hesitate to, to ask. Um, so our first question is from Yanis Bukas. So thank you for your nice presentation. Are there any optimality guarantees for the proposed meter? Uh, sorry. So the, the question is, uh, are there any optimality guarantees for the proposed meter? You, I think you use uh, heuristics, uh, genetic algorithms, and so on. So is there any... Yeah, okay, I, I, I understand that. the... So, so it's well known that the meta is uh, that give rise to approximated solutions. And especially when uh, the solutions are not possible to confirm uh, by deterministic uh, strategies. So the way to guarantee a, a good result or a partially good result with the, or the optimality of the results is through the repetitivity of the, 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 so the simulations or the simulations. So after a certain repetitivity of the simulations, it's uh, possible to demonstrate that the solutions converge to the same searching area. And with some analysis of, for example, the, the variance of the solution maximum and minimum limit, the Pareto optimal set, uh, it's, usually to, it's usually accepted as a well uh, or as a good solution in this heuristic. Thank you, uh, Sergio. We have a, a second question. Uh, so from uh, Mario Kuto, what type of ancillary services do you consider in this approach? Yeah. And maybe to complement uh, uh, in your paper, you I think you uh, you only valorize uh, or consider ancillary export ancillary services. Uh, so when you can produce more with your with your microgrid, I think. Uh, yes, okay, thank you, Mario. Uh, it's a really good question, by the way. Yes, I mean, the model by itself considers ancillary services from the extra residual uh, power that can be exported uh, from the microgrid to the main grid. In this case, uh, the services that can be so offered, so basically the spinning, non spinning reserves, and also up and down uh, regulations. And those are basically the ancillary services that can be considered in this approach. I mean, from the main grid point of view, the microgrid is seen as a whole entity, a controllable entity that can offer this uh, extra uh, power uh, to the different operations. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Maybe a last uh, very uh, quick question. Do you, can you give us an idea of the number of uh, variables you have in your problem? Yes. Um, for example, 
specific problem, we have a set of variables uh, based on the number of distributed energy resources for the capacity, for the location, and also for the buses. In this case, decision variables, um, if I remember well. Yep. But Sorry, of course, I, this I, depend. Can you repeat the number, please? I didn't get it. It's around 60 decision variables and depends, of course, of the size of the test system. Yeah. The number of. Thank you.